I have several designs for um, electric toy cars. Um, this is the simplest one because um, the motor isn't directly uh, connected to the, to the drive axle. Um, it's going to be fitted with a propeller to create a jet of air which will create a force to push the electric car forwards. And I've done this many times in schools with year five and six. Um, to start off, um, we're going to make the chassis. Uh, as usual, I'm going to be using Corex. You could, uh, you could just as easily make it out of cardboard. This is 4mm Corex for strength. And um, I've punched it with two holes here. We have a hole punch. If you don't have a hole punch, you could use a sharp pencil very carefully. And we're going to use those holes later on to uh, make a switch. But before we do that, we need to fit it with two jumbo plastic drinking straws for the bearings for the axles. Uh, we, could, we could stick them on with uh, low melt glue from a glue gun. Um, I'm going to use um, sticky tape. Sticky tape works very well with Corex. It can last several years. When you put the sellotape on the straw, don't squash the straw. Wrap it round the straw. Because an axle has got to run freely through the straw. Air powered vehicles do not have a lot of force, so you need to keep them small, keep them light, and make sure that the wheels turn as freely as possible. Next thing I'm going to do is, do is cut the straws back to leave a little bit sticking out at each side. That will stop the wheels from rubbing on the chassis. Um, got lots of different wheels we could use. Try and use some wheels that are very light. These are very light plastic wheels. They've got a 4mm hole, so I'm going to use 4mm dowel. That's a nice push fit. It's not always, doesn't always work like that, but uh, I think we don't need to put any glue on those. When you push the wheels together, always leave a little gap to make sure that the axle turns really freely. Just do the other end now. There we go. And there's just enough the other end for the other wheel to go on. So that you end up with a very, very light, free running chassis. Next thing we need to do is to build a tower at one end to put the motor on top. We'll just push this two bladed propeller onto the motor, make sure it's free to turn. We need to build a tower because if we fix the motor onto the chassis, it wouldn't have room for the motor to turn. So this needs to be raised up. Uh, we could use um, cotton reels, um, a block of wood perhaps. Um, another uh, an alternative method which I've started to use is to get a piece of Corex, a strip of Corex, and to score it so that it folds and then score it again on the other side to create two feet. And that makes quite a nice tower which can be fixed on with a glue gun or sellotape. Um, so that's, that's quite a nice idea. Uh, but I'm going to use um, two small pieces of Corex and four pieces of wood to construct the tower. I'm going to use a glue gun to assemble them. First thing I'm going to do is to glue a piece of wood to one end of the Corex. Make sure it's right at the edge of the Corex. And then another piece on the other side. And then exactly the same on the second piece, one piece of wood at one end, one piece of wood at the other. And now I'm going to glue the two, pe two pieces of the towel together like that. So we'll glue those together. And there we are, there are the two pieces glued, glued together. Um, now I'm going to glue that tower down onto the uh, um, racer. Just need to make an adjustment here because I've noticed I haven't made those two pieces of plastic the same length. There we are. That's much better. So we're now going to glue that down. And glue the tower down to one end of the chassis, it doesn't matter which end. We can now glue the motor on top of there. We could use a 
plastic motor clip. I'm just going to put a big blob of glue on there. With a large amount of glue you've got more like 10 seconds to get the things together so you can relax about the time. And it's very important when you glue the motor on to make sure that it overhangs, it sticks out enough to allow the propeller to go all the way around without scraping on the chassis or the tail. So make sure it's straight, make sure it sticks out enough to allow the propeller to go all the way around. Next thing we're going to do is to start to build the circuit. We want this to go around fairly fast so we're going to run it off of um, 3 volts. We use two AA batteries and then pop on a connector. Once you put these connectors on, make sure the pupils don't accidentally touch the wires together. It will uh, ruin the batteries. There's no particular danger with these cheap batteries. They'll just get hot, but not, not enough to burn anyone. So just make sure that the ends of the wires don't accidentally touch. I'm now going to glue this down to the back of the racer to balance the weight at the front. Balance the weight of the motor at the front. And we'll glue that on there. And now we need to um, find out which way the motor goes when we connect it up. Um, this racer can be made to go that way or that way. It works uh, well in both directions. Um, I think it goes slightly faster if it goes in that direction. So to make it go in that direction we need the air to come back this way. If the air comes back this way, the pressure increases, it creates a force which pushes it in the opposite direction. And the only way to find out which way the motor goes is to connect up the wires. So I'm holding one of the motor wires to one of the battery wires. Uh, okay, that was an unlucky guess because the air is going that way. So I need to swap the wires over. So let's put that one on there and that one on there. And, ah, yes, now I can feel the air coming back over my hand. So that's the way I want it to go. So I can now permanently join two of these wires together. It, doesn't, it could be these two or these two. I'm going to join these two together. Cross over the ends and twist them together. And I like to fold in half as well. If I had time, I would stick this, that connection down with sellotape. For now, I'm just going to tuck it inside the towel there. Okay, um, for the switch we, we could use a bought switch. Uh, this is one where you can um, make the connections with a small screwdriver. It's a push on, push off switch. There's lots of different kinds of switches. Um, I think I like to make my own switches uh, out of cheap materials. I'm just going to use two paper fasteners and a paper clip. We get one of the wires, it doesn't matter which one, this is the motor wire. Pass it down between the legs of the paper fastener, like that. Bend it round. And then pass the paper fastener down through one of the holes we made earlier. And bend the legs over. We then get the last wire. Now the battery wires are made of lots of strands, so twist them all together. Once again pass it down between the legs of the paper fastener. Twist it round and twist it so that it doesn't escape. But this time also put a paper clip down between the legs of the paper fastener and then put the paper fastener down through the second hole and bend the legs over as tight as you can. Make sure the two paper fasteners don't touch each other underneath. And what I like to do to make it uh, a bit more reliable is to cover them with um, the underside with a piece of sticky tape. It makes it last a bit longer. And the circuit is completed by twisting the paper fastener over so that it touches the other, uh, twisting the paper clip over, beg your pardon, so it touches the other paper fastener. So it's a simple switch. So let's see if it works. Yep, there we go, we've got some force there. After a while it will pick up speed. Um, if it's allowed to crash into a wall, um, it will probably break. So um, I challenge uh, people who have made their racer to perhaps think about some kind of bumper system, some soft material, like bubble wrap or foam here, to protect it when it crashes. 
So I hope you enjoy making these simple um, electric fan racers.